So let's take a look at Matic. <clears throat> Matic is currently uh, still recovering from the May, September 7th crash uh, that was seen here, uh, which roughly wiped out 32% of the gains that was formed after like months, weeks of consolidation. And uh, yeah, uh, right now, like the market seems to be like uh, bouncing back after this crash. And uh, a lot of altcoins have already started, uh, you know, going like surging like crazy right now. And Matic is still kind of falling behind that. And as you can see right now, there's a, there's a green candle that's happening on the, on the daily time frame. Right. So what can you expect from Matic? Matic was forming this uh, inverted head and shoulder pattern. As you can see here, this is the right, left shoulder that was formed here. And then a dip below this. Uh, formed another shoulder over here. And as it actually broke out of here, uh, I expected it to go higher, but I still had uh, some doubts like this shoulder that we have formed is not as precise uh, as uh, the low of the shoulder that comes around 1.25. Uh, I was expecting a dip up here, down here, but once uh, Matic kind of broke out here, I kind of uh, left this thought behind and removed my string bits but I didn't expect this crash to happen, right? So finally it happened and I'm glad I was uh, all in USDT. So yeah, right now I think Matic looks really, really good uh, for uh, to restart this uh, upswing, which is which can roughly give out like a 57% gain. Uh, yeah, so let me just clear this out. Going forward, what do, you expect, what do you expect Matic to do is to climb above these two resistance levels here, which is at 1.37 and 1.47. And once it does that, it'll have to face off uh, the neckline, which comes around the 1.65 level. Breaching these levels will provide Matic with clear skies to go up to the intended target, which is at 2.56. But looking at uh, the, the descent that took place from May 26 to 11 June, uh, there was a bit of consolidation, a bit of struggle here, where the buyers and uh, the sellers were kind of in agreement here. And then it, it uh, finally collapsed, right? So going forward, you can expect Matic to face a little bit of uh, headwinds uh, around the 1.87 level uh, and similarly uh, at the 2.20 level, right? But after that, I think uh, this uh, the target kind of coincides pretty well with these two cans that was formed here. So yeah, I, I think if you, if you want to get in now, you want to play it a little risky, uh, you'll be looking at roughly a 90% upswing. And if you want to wait for confirmation of close above the next line, uh, it's going to be roughly 57% upswing. Right. Uh, in case this doesn't happen, right, in case um, Matic doesn't uh, keep up or break these uh, resistance levels and it continues to, and if this crash continues again after a minor upswing, you can expect Matic to find support uh, in this demand zone here, ranging from 1.06 to 1.16. As you can see, uh, the crash kind of uh, dipped into this demand zone and it saw a massive, the sell-off was absorbed by a lot of buying pressure, which pushed it uh, up by 23%, right? So this whole drop was roughly 32%, out of which the buyers uh, reduced this drop by 23%, by pumping 23%. So, but uh, if Matic ever closes below this, a demand zone's low limit at 1.06. You can expect Matic to, you know, you can ex you, you can forget the bull run or like the uh, the upswing that I was talking about here, and you can expect Matic to uh, find support at the one dollar level, right? And beyond this, as you can see, there's not a lot of support here because of this massive candle up here. So it's it's gonna get really ugly if Matic breaks below 1.09. So yeah, but I I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon, considering the recent uh, drop that we saw here. So yeah, I'm optimistic about Matic.